In this video, I'm gonna replace the nasty looking orange handle that's on this hammer. I bought this hammer about 10 years ago to replace the one that was stolen from me. And I didn't like the handle color then either, but it was cheap. And I figured as ugly as it is, it would be less attractive to the next thief that came along. And there's one other problem with the hammer that I also wanna fix. And I'll get to that later in the video. But first I need to select a piece of wood to use for the handle. And there's nothing really interesting in my scrap wood closet, but I do have these pieces of spalted maple. And these are left over from that bowling ball size sphere that I turned a couple months ago. So the first step is to bring it over to the bandsaw and cut it apart until I can find a piece that has a lot of spalting in there. And the next thing I need to do with this is get this old handle off. I've actually done this before. About 20 years ago, a guy I was working with dropped his in a fire. And of course that burned up the handle as well. And things were a little bit slow, so I made a handle and put it on there. And about a week later, I left it out in the rain and that dissolved the wood glue that I had in there holding it together and it came apart. Okay, that's about what I thought it would look like. So there are two ways that I can do this. I could drill out the middle of the blank with a long drill bit and make it so that I could fit the tang in there and then glue it in place. That would be a lot of work though. So I'm gonna do it the easier way and that's to cut the handle blank in half and then cut slots in each half to fit around the tang. However, when I was cutting it out, another idea occurred to me, and that's that I could cut the handle blank in half, but rather than cutting a slot in each side, I could find a contrasting strip of wood to put in there that's the same thickness as the tang on the hammer, but before I glue on the handle, waterproof glue this time, that is, it makes sense to bring the hammer out to my shed and clean it up and reshape the cloth. What I found with this hammer is that the claw was not very sharp at all, way, way too thick. So I'm gonna take the time now to grind that down. And of course, I'm being careful not to overheat the steel as well. While we're out here in the shed using my homemade belt grinder, let me tell you about the plans that I sell for it. These machines are incredibly useful, but they're also not cheap. However, you can use my plans and build your own for a fraction of the cost of buying one ready-made. My plans show all of the details, are step-by-step -step and easy to follow, and my designs don't involve any fancy cuts or joinery, and only use commonly available hardware. And if a belt grinder is something that you don't really need, there are a lot more plans available, and by buying one, you really help to support the work I do in making these videos. Now, I could go further with this and really polish it up, but I think this looks pretty good right here. So anyway, with the metal work done, I can carry on with the woodwork. I'm gonna cut the piece of sapele down the middle, and then I'm gonna get a liberal amount of glue on the handle parts to make sure that it's completely filled when I clamp it together. Well, I gave the glue overnight to dry, and then I cut out those paper templates that I drew up before from the original handle, and I'm gonna use a side profile to mark out the basic shape of the handle, and then I can bring that over and cut that out on the bandsaw. And with that cut out, I can use the other one to do the same, except on the edge. And this is a little bit trickier to cut out because the head of the hammer is in the way. So I've set up a riser block on the bandsaw to lift it up high enough so I can make the cut. And from here, I'm gonna be doing a lot of shaping by hand. I have power tools that might do this more efficiently but I figure I might as well go full on into wasting my time here by doing this in the first place. Sure, I'm gonna have a hammer that looks hot and sexy, but I really don't need one. And you know what? It's not gonna impress any of the nails that I drive with it. So I roughed out the shape with my spoke shave, and then I finished the shaping with strips of coarse sandpaper before moving on to finer ones when I was happy with how it looked and felt. 
Now, of course, since this is just wood, durability is an issue. I don't ever plan on using this hammer outdoors, but it does need some protection. So what I'm gonna do is wipe on several coats of linseed oil, and over the course of a week or two, it'll build up a reasonably durable finish. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that one. Even though I think that this type of thing is pretty much a waste of time, it really doesn't add anything to the tool after all. It was fun to do, and I don't regret the time I put into it. <laughs>